Man Cave. This is Bob from the Bob Zenskill Man Cave and today part four or so, I think it's part four of how to build an end scale trestle. I am on to staining some of my uh, pieces of wood. I've already done some pieces of wood already and as you can see they're uh, pretty black creosote looking. Uh, I used some leather dye, feeblings or feebing, yeah, feebings, leather dye, and I got <clears throat> the USMC black and a dark brown. Now the reason I got these is because I'm actually kind of emulating Lex Parker and his. Uh, instructional videos on YouTube which I'll get send links to if you want to watch those they're amazing he does a really great job on his trestles and since this is my first time I figured I might as well copy somebody that uh, knows how to do it correctly and see if I can at least make something look somewhat similar um, <clears throat> so with that I took the die you just go down to any leather shop we actually got this from Tandy Leather uh, there's a website, tandyleather.com. And I also will take 70% isopropyl alcohol. You can also use the 91% alcohol as well. Uh, I chose to go with a little bit cheaper alcohol. And you mix that into some sort of mixing container uh, that you can pour back into. Uh, I got this also at uh, Tandy Leather. Um, I'd probably go get a more sealable jar because this one does not really seal very well at the top so it wasn't the best choice I figured it was gonna work but it, it'll do you want to take your leather die and this stuff does not pour out very well it will run down the sides as you can probably see all over the side of this um, and it'll make a mess. So what I bought the other day was a syringe. A little uh, fueling syringe that I got at the local hobby shop for uh, filling up your model airplanes and cars and stuff like that with gasoline or whatever fuel that they're using. So I got one of those and I'm going to uh, siphon it out of my dye bottles and mix it in with my isopropyl alcohol in a little mixing tray. Now you can use any size mixing tray that you could fit your wood into and then just dump all your wood in there, swish it around, get it all uh, mixed up and dry it on some newspaper, wipe it off with some paper towels. Uh, the alcohol will dry off leaving just the dye on the wood and uh, it should look pretty good. Now I'm going to mix the black, mostly black, and I'm going to mix probably one part uh, the brown. So probably uh, three parts black, one part brown. And it's a guesstimate anyway. Um, always test it to see what it looks like, to see how dark it's going to turn out, and if that's the right color you want add more, mix some more uh, alcohol into it, thin it out some more, whatever it's going to take. But as I'm going to show you, it's a little quick little process. So let's take a look, shall we? Okay, first things first, I have this little uh, microwave tray from, uh, I believe, Lean Cuisine as my uh, staining tray. Stain will stain anything, so I'm going to wear some surgical gloves. You can use uh, any kind of gloves if you want. If you don't, well, your hands get all gooey or stained, and it's not uh, the greatest fun. I'm going to start off with putting in my previous <laughs> batch of stain. And because it's alcohol, 
it just like runs over the sides and will make a mess. So just make sure you got plenty of paper towels and stuff to uh, clean this up with. If that happens to happen to you. Paper towel. See, that's how quick. Now I'm going to start off, I'm going to be staining some long 24 inch pieces of wood. Uh, I don't have a 24 inch tray to just lay it down in, so I'm just going to kind of brush it on with a uh, little uh, horsehair type brush. See that turns out uh, pretty uh, black. So these pieces are going to be basically my stringers on uh, top of the bents, so I need to at least have them pretty dark. Stand it up in this bath. And it's just painting it. Let it drip down and back into the pan. Take a paper towel. Basically dry it off. Check it to make sure you got stain everywhere. Yep, looks like it's good. Set it off to the side to dry. I usually put it on some uh, newspaper and uh, everything should be good. I'm going to continue doing this and uh, we'll see how we uh, mix some more up. I have a lot of little tiny pieces left. These are uh, going to be uh, bracing on the bents, so I have to stain all these before I start putting all my bents together. Okay, I'm still staining some of this. I added in some uh, dark brown to make this stand out a little bit more browner, as you can probably tell. Um, this uh, black stuff is a lot blacker looking, and so I'm uh, making it a little bit browner. So I'm standing two of them at a time here. Get brush it up a little bit. For these little pieces, I just drop them in the solution, swish them around a little bit. A pair of tweezers, and just pick them up, kind of lay them on the side, let them drip off a little bit. Into the solution. So dripping off onto the newspaper and make it really wet. They will like to stick together. Knock them off. And then before you, uh, you know, put them back in your holder, so you keep them separate, rub them off with a um, paper towel, and put them away. I'll continue doing these and uh, get back with you. This is what happens when you put in more brown with the black. You can see one side is grayer than the other. Well, the browner side, I put some more brown in with my mixture to give that a little bit more of a, a newer look to that wood. One 
side is going to look a lot more aged than the other side. Um, I probably didn't really, really want to have that effect, but that's what I have right now with the pieces. I could restain the gray ones a little bit more red, browner and put this back in, but you know, it's taking a while to stain these. I don't want to have to redo it all over again, and it doesn't really change too much the color. So I'm just going to say, well, there were some repairs on my trestle, and they put newer wood on it, uh, more redwood. And uh, it'll just happen to look more realistic, I guess. Well, there you go. I've got all these uh, pieces stained. All these braces are stained now. Um, you, as you can see, I've got a darker brown on this side and some gray ones on this side. All the gray ones and some of these uh, mixed brown ones over here are going to be uh, the cross bracing on the bents. And <clears throat> all these are going to be the actual uh, angle bracing and uh, between each of these. I also have uh, the bottom base pieces down here and I have some uh, top cap pieces right in this area. This is a good idea to put your pieces in a parts box, separate them out by size, rows based on what they are, uh, keep your pieces separated because it makes it a lot easier to put it back together when you start gluing the pieces into the uh, template. So what I'm going to do now is I've got some other pieces over here that I can stain. These little uh, pieces right here I can stain and you can get these at uh, Hobby Lobby. And I got a bunch of old spare parts down in there at the bottom there so I can uh, stain a lot of these little pieces and use those for something else too. So I'm going to work on that. And as and always Mancavians, if uh, you want to see more of this build or some of my other reviews and layout visits and other Man Cave news, uh, subscribe up here. And uh, as always you'll uh, get some information when you see that I've posted something new. Stick with it and you'll see this whole progress come to fruition and uh, probably speed these things up a little bit faster uh, as I get going and closer to actually finishing this. So until next time guys, happy railroading and uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, have fun.